giving them rides around Memphis like a taxi cab. (laughs) Here I am, you know, but I I drove it out, which we were all supposed to do. That was part of the deal. That was part of the deal. All the number one, all the 16 qualifiers Mm -hmm. were supposed to go on that cruise. And I remember where it was, Chuck Hutton Chevrolet. Yeah, yeah. They had a pig roast there. It had a Mm -hmm. band there. And I drove it out there, and no one else came out because yeah. everyone was fixing. They were all fixing their cars. All the nitrous cars. Because they'd all like, grenaded their stuff, stuff trying to qualify. You know? yeah. But anyway, yeah. I was driving it all around and ruined all my valve springs. Yeah. And, you know, back yeah. then, I, I wasn't, you know, I didn't know enough back then to have extra parts. I had no extra valve springs. Mm-hmm. And so we broke a valve spring on the last yeah. run. So I ran on 8, 870. 870. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Back then, so then the next car. all the EFI. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is all carburetor. That's just free. Well, the so 57, the, though, before I, before I got rid of the 57, I ended up going 750s naturally after that car. Hey, welcome to Car Guy Confessions, brought to you by ARP. I'm Jeff Smith. This is my car buddy, Cam Benzie, and car builder, Steve Strope. And we're going to tell you some stories. Welcome to another episode of Car Guy Confessions with Jeff Smith, Steve Strope, oh. and our our ultra famous uh, guest here, Rod Savory, and his wife's going to be on with us with a little yeah. bit later. She's but uh, first of all, we want to thank uh, ARP Bolts.com, yes. you know, our sponsor, and those guys really help us out, and we really appreciate it. And we also want to give a shout out to the Grand National Roaster Show. That's where we are right yep. now. Yep. So we're away from our bat cave. We're at the Roaster we're at Show. The other cave. Yeah, the other cave. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to thank John Beck and, and uh, Kevin Doyle for helping us out with this whole thing. We couldn't do sure. them without, yep. without, we couldn't do this without them. So, yep. Great so show I want to jump at. right in here because. Uh, uh, Wait no! I, if you, I have to. I have to, you say, have to say something. Well, okay. I'm very wow. I'm excited about a lot of stuff going on here. One that Jeff's back in in the cockpit here, <laughs> but he's he's out snow farming. Yes, or whatever yes. he's Eight, doing. You know, four foot drifts. Yes, and uh, two as you mentioned, we're here at Grand National, which is it's just it is my favorite show to go to. Uh, SEMA is a different thing. And it's phenomenal and all the rest. But this is a different thing where uh, I get to spend time with my friends and it's more of a hangout than it is a um, uh, show where you're doing business, even though I do business here. So that's one. And two, this will be um, actually directly related to our guest. So you're going to be seeing upcoming in a, in a bunch of episodes we're going to be filming here during this weekend uh, pretty much a parade of all of my heroes. Why I'm here on camera annoying you is because when I was back home in Appalachian in 1984, 85, all the way to 95, when I decided to move to California, uh, I had nothing to do because I lived in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and I lived and breathed by the words this man wrote. And, uh, and the car I, this guy built. Yeah, and, and well, yeah, that, and that's where I'm going. I was massively influenced by uh, the pro street movement. Um, I thought it was the coolest fucking thing. And uh, Rod and Scott Sullivan, Matt and Debbie Hay, Rick Doberton, Mark Grimes. You can go down the list. Yeah. Well, they're <laughs> they're here, yeah. and the cars are here. The cars are, and here. they they haven't been under the same roof in probably a long. Let alone, I don't even know probably, if every one of them have the been under the same room. Probably, same roof. Uh, yeah, since the eighties, early eighties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's very, very cool. It's extra, and for me, again, a, 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 a huge thank you. It's very humbling that I've the building they're in is an invitational building. Um, you don't pay to get a booth space. The car gets invited in. And uh, the powers that be actually have three of my past cars in there. And it's me, Steve Strope, the owner of Pure Vision, is excluded. Me, the ex-16-year-old from Appalachian, cannot believe <laughs> one of my piles are sitting down there <laughs> You know, in the same building with the people that I, I all but worshipped. Yeah. And uh, it's very humbling and it's very exciting. So um, from me, thank you for being on the program. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you for bringing My the pleasure. cars out and, and for spending time and meeting all the new people that hopefully will become fans of yours. Uh, just like just like I not only was but I am. Yeah. So okay, now you can talk. <laughs> so this is going to be tough because we have to we have to squeeze in forty some odd years of stuff that you've been doing. Yeah. And there's really I want to do two shows because there's two sides to you. There's the drag racing side of you, yeah. and then there's the pro street side of you. And and you know this is going to be tough to squeeze all this stuff in. But let's start with the chronological the, the, the sixty nine Camaro, right? Right. Well, Which I you started drag racing. Yeah, and um, that's the it, one here. Yeah. yeah, it's here. Right. Yeah. So, As a pro street car. Yeah. 
But I, initially, it was a, it was a super stock car. It was a super for it was on you know if I, it was a Z twenty eight that I bought new in sixty nine. Uh-huh. I drove it to my high school yeah. prom. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, and God I just it. with my wife just drove it to my fiftieth class reunion. Same oh, car. Really? That's yeah, so cool. I mean, people That's can so say cool. that. Yeah, right? yeah. Did anybody? Of course, it looks a little different. It looks a little bit yeah. different. Yeah. my one friend, I told her, I said, my friend Harry, he's going to have some smart comment, and he said, oh, well, it doesn't look the same as it did back in high school. I said, well, neither do we. <laughs> Yeah, they all got old, didn't they? Somehow. They all yeah. got old. I don't know how that Yeah, but works. anyway, so, yeah, I bought it new and um, drag raced it on the street, which I hate to say now. I um, don't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> went, to a co- <laughs> went to a couple drag races and kind of got hooked, and I, I actually took it off the street, put it on the track, and made a super stock J car with this 302. Uh-huh. Had a 650 rear end gear. 650. 650. We, can't, we started out with a 513, and <laughs> yes. we didn't change anything, but we, the rear end gears, and every time we went lower, it went faster. Okay. All right. And we yeah. ended up with a 650. You can't Did you just lower. rent yourself out as a wheelie exhibition car? <laughs> yeah. with a, at well, that well point, a little tiny motor and 10, probably a big 10, flywheel. 10,000 right? RPM yeah. and through the traps. Yeah. You sound like a bumblebee. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, you can't go any lower than 650 because the pinion gets too Pinions small. Pinion's black bigger yeah. already, yeah. yeah. But anyway, so uh, I tell everybody, it, with that RPM and the weight of the car, because you had to run factory shipping weight. Sure. I even had to run a spare tire and a jack in the car. Really? That was the rules. Wow. NHRA was much stricter then than yeah, they are now. They are now, We yeah. couldn't run wheelie bars. Oh and and you also could only move the frame rail in the width of the frame rail. And you okay. had to use the frame rail that you cut out to weld back wow. in. Wow, wow. So are so, you saying this pro streetcar actually cuts numbers? Yeah. <laughs> is that, what, so, you're, is that well, what you're saying? So my, my index, the Superstock J index, was 1111. And it would run 11 O's, which was fast enough oh, back yeah. then to win. Oh, heck yeah. And absolutely. I actually, in you said it win class, yeah, for yeah, sure. In yeah, in 77. I won my class, the Superstock J class, at the Summer Nationals, and it went us um, 11:05. Um, I did set the record at a points meet at Maple Grove, with it, which you could set the record at a points meet, but uh-huh. you had to go through teardown. Okay. They don't yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. But you had to go through down teardown. Teardown. Said so that's a whole that we could do a whole story just about yeah. teardown. Well, <laughs> the funny thing is, I set the record at Maple Grove. And the guy behind me, the car behind me, was Jim Baburka, who had a 69 Z28 Super Stock J car. Okay. He went two hundreds quicker. So I held the record for one, <laughs> one, one pass on the track. Yeah. <laughs> so then after that, so then, then you went to the 63 Corvette? Was well, that the next step? No, I still had this. What I did with this was I took it off the street. Um, when York US 30 closed in 79, okay. I was heartbroken. That was my home track. Yeah. I, only, I, I actually... Know all those tracks because oh, I'm yeah. from upstate New York. Yeah, so it was a great I used track. to go out. Yeah, I went there for a reunion run when they opened the track back up, and Dino Don had brought a couple oh, of cars. Yeah. All and, the big names. Were yeah, that was time. a lot of fun. They was, they had the show down in the Armory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 that's right. They did. Yeah, I was racer of the year in '76, and that was yeah. pretty tough at, at that track because well, there yeah. were some big names there. Sure. I was, you know, like yeah. the Beverly Hillbillies, you know. <laughs> but but anyway, so I took it off the, the track and parked it in my basement. Now you have to remember, back then. I didn't have a garage. My wife and I had a FHA loan, Farmers Home Administration. They wouldn't let you have a garage. If you got that loan, you didn't have a garage. You, really? Yeah. So huh. I had I had them put two. I was at a band too. I put two four foot doors in the basement. I told them we were going to band practice in the basement. Ah. I could get my car in there, <laughs> and I built that car, the Pro Street car. Okay. Right beside my washing machine. Okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. I know so, that feeling. Yeah. So while so I completely anyway, know that. Wow. That we're was, we're frighteningly parallel yeah. so far. <laughs> well, while while that was in my basement waiting for whatever I wanted to do with it. Uh, is when I built the black split window. Okay, all right. Yeah, so which got everybody worked up. Yeah, yeah because that, got, that was that was a 100-point resto car when you started. It was with. a 99-point concourse show car. It was a black split window with saddle interior, original fuelie car. Oh, boy. And I so bought there, it. There I no wonder everyone got People that were not oh, happy yeah, with yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> I watched it when they invited me places. I thought they wanted to hang me or something. So I wouldn't <laughs> but but um, actually, when you think about it, uh, and I that got that the blown big block, right? Yeah, I put a 454 Charlie Garrett who built my super stock engines. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's still building engines. Is he still? Yeah. Good for him. Good uh, for him. Sprint car, outlaw sprint car motors. But anyway, um, he, he built the motor. We built a, a 454, 60 over, you know. And um, I did everything in my basement except the, um, the motor. Charlie built the motor. Uh, I put the motor in, did the frame myself, 
you know, narrative frame, mm -hmm. roll cage, yeah. all that. And even the graphics, that, that black paint that you saw in the magazines, yeah. Yeah. that was the original paint. Really? That's how nice wow. that car was. We wow. just put graphics over the original paint. That, <laughs> that really got them fired up. Then. Yeah. So, yeah. so while people are listening, is there somewhere online that you can tell them, yeah, go to so they can see the car we're talking well, about? Well, we'll probably super up some photos, We're going to put some right? photos yeah, while up. we're talking. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll show some We images. have that technology? I think so. Yeah, oh Tina's got God. a bunch of nice photos, <laughs> all the magazine covers and all that stuff. Uh-huh, yeah. And, and, uh, but There's anyways, a beautiful so, car. I remember seeing oh, it at yeah. Canfield. Yeah. yeah, but I think it was the first one that I know of that had a, I had a 1071 blow on it with two Dominators. Now, this is oh, back I in remember the early it. 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, I had yeah. them chrome plated. Uh -huh. The centers were red and the mm -hmm. bowls were chrome plated. And mm -hmm. I had those four chrome stacks on them. That's right. Which I everybody that. really yep. liked. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But um, no, I, so I had that car and, and we won all kinds of events with it. We won Super Chevy, you know, Editor's Choice. And it was on the cover of umpteen magazines. And uh, I, unfortunately, I, in 1987, I, you know, I do roofing. Yeah. I just retired. So, so while you're building all these cars, you're I'm, a professional I'm roofer. Roofing. Yeah. And I'm you, know, you know, you only told me a story a few years ago. I didn't. I thought when you said you were a professional roofer, I thought, okay, he manages, you know, eight, ten teams out there <laughs> no, putting no, roofs on. Just me and my sister. It's you and yeah. my sister and your sister. Yeah, Thirty-five years we wow. worked together, but uh, in '87. <laughs> Which put an end to that in '87, um, which I had to split window. Yeah. I fell three stories off an apartment building oh. and landed on my head, oh. and I had oh. a brain injury, and I was really in bad shape. And my the comical part about it was I was in the hospital, and the doctors are asking me all these questions, trying to figure out how bad I was hurt. Right. Yeah. My mom comes in; she was dying of cancer at the time. She oh. had a little turban on. She comes in; she parted the doctors like Moses parted the Red Sea, and she goes, <laughs> "Roddy, what kind of car do you have?" And she said, I gave her a blank look, and she mm -hmm. told the doctors, he's hurt really bad. Oh, boy. <laughs> and I didn't even know. <laughs> yeah, well, you can't. I didn't even know I had it. Wow. Yeah, I didn't even. Wow. So I sold it wow. to a guy in Chicago, and uh, he didn't really do much with it. That's another story, but I don't really want to go there. Yeah, we but, don't want to go there. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know that story. <laughs> you told me the story. Jeff and I. Would I would love back. to tell the story. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. These are the ramifications, be you know. I was like, better but anyway, not um, Yeah, so, so from there, then in um, – Tina and I met in '89, and when we right after we met, I was really wanting to get back into drag racing because I hadn't raced since my Camaro. That's when the white Corvette came out. Yeah, uh. yeah. So the '57, who that's what I had when Jeff and I met in '92 at the first shootout at, at Memphis, which I was really seeing neat. Seeing that in all the car. comp cams ads. Yeah, and that. That's my favorite car of all the stuff that you've done. That's my favorite car. Yeah. Big giant motor, yeah, lightweight single, single car, four barrel, naturally single aspirated, four barrel, yeah. naturally aspirated, and are out there. You were number two qualifier, one. right? No, you're number one qualifier. Yeah, Steve. Steve Johnson was That's behind right. me by one thousandth, <laughs> and I said, "Man, if you didn't have that Rolex watch on, you would be number one qualifier." <laughs> <laughs> Remember, he had the yeah. Firebird. He was yeah, driving. yeah, but and and he's now running Induction yeah, Solutions. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah, good yeah. guy. Yeah, really good oh, guy. excellent guy, super but, guy. But anyway, so but the funny thing is, right after Tina and I got married, I got the hankering to get back into drag racing, and I I opened up the back of National Dragster, and in the back where they had all the ads mm -hmm. yeah. was that '57 body. Right. It was okay. a super yep. gas car. Yep. That's all it was, 990 car. Okay. It was a super gas car. And I said, man, I want that thing. So I ended up going to Denver to get it, had it delivered. And then I found out about your event. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I went to Charlie so Garrett. So just went, Whoop. Yeah, I like went that. to Charlie Garrett. And I said, man, I need a motor for this event. And we threw that car together, I mean, literally within six months. Really? We put wow. the motor in. The transmission was a power glide. It was a 632 with one dominator. Charlie built incredible motors. And I think it made uh, 890 or something like that on a dyno, which was pretty Good. And, and you were at Memphis, you were racing against nitrous cars, blower mostly, cars, blower turbo cars, cars, turbo cars. Yeah, Wayne Deputy. Yeah. Not Wayne yep. Deputy, but Gene Deputy. Gene Deputy turbo. with that turbo Mustang. And then yeah. uh and, and Did you have uh, nitrous on that car? No. No, no it was, it was not, straight. naturally aspirated. So naturally aspirated, giant motor, really light car right. against yeah. all these much heavier cars with, with big power, power adders. And yeah, I was, I was stuff uh, left and right. I was, you should have won that race. I remember your silver you should, outfits. You should have won that race. You guys had I silver with like a spring, right? yeah. black yeah. And, and, that, and either raspberry or pink, the stripes on your Yeah, yeah. I remember the photos yeah, of the, the two of you always had matching 
Yeah, yeah we right. always yeah, and, we and uh, should have sure won that race. Good. Broke a valve spring, didn't know it. Yeah, and then he just mile an hour past you I at the, still, in the lights, right? Yeah, he, yeah. Uh, um, Max Carter. Max Carter. I yes, left with going, the Chevy too. I left Ooh, with the red big Chevy time. too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I remember yep. all yep. that. Yeah. I left on him big time, and about the thousand foot mark, I could hear him coming because <laughs> at the, on the starting line with those nitrous and blower cars, I could hardly yeah. ever hear mine. You know, because we were running Flowmasters. We all had to run Flowmasters. Yeah, exactly. Not like today. Yep. Right. Yep. And we drove our cars. Yeah. Because you. You went to the show the night before. Nobody That's what else killed me. The, That's what ruined my. I would have won that race if I hadn't. I was given rides around Ray Fluger. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from Flowmaster. Who, who owned Flowmaster at the time? Richard Small, all those he guys. Was his I was PR, giving yeah. them rides around Memphis like a taxi cab. <laughs> Here I am, you know. But I, I drove it out, which we were all supposed to do. That right. was part of the deal. That was part of the all deal. All the number one, all the sixteen qualifiers mm-hmm. were supposed to go on that cruise, and I remember yeah. where it was: Chuck Hutton Chevrolet. Yeah, yeah. They had a yep. pig roast there. It had a mm-hmm. band there, and I drove it out there and no one else came out because yeah. everyone was fixing they were all fixing their cars because the they'd all grenaded their stuff, stuff trying to qualify you know? yeah but anyway yeah. i was driving all around and ruined all my valve springs yeah. and you know back yeah. then i i wasn't you know i didn't know enough back then to have extra parts i had no extra valve springs mm. and so we broke a valve spring on the last yeah. run so i ran on seven cylinders but it still ran a seven seven seventy and yeah. max ran a 40 i think <laughs> yeah yeah or, yep. I'm sorry, 8, 870. 870. Yeah, yeah. Back then, so then the next before car. Before all the EFI. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is all carburetor. That's just free. Well, the so 57, the, though, before I amen. before I got rid of the 57, I ended up going 750s naturally, Asprey, really? with that car. Really? The same car. Yeah, yeah. stock yeah. body, interior. Yeah. Do you still have that car? No, no. Uh-huh. That's actually sitting up at a shop, a friend of mine's shop in New York right now. Um, they're putting it, the guy that owns it is putting it on the street. Okay. Putting it back on the street. Very but then, cool. So then, yeah, the next car. Yep. So I wanted to build, I tell you, the 57 was going too fast to be safe. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was just a two by three chassis. It was built for a 990 car, which is a big difference right. between 990 and oh 750. Boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and uh, I wanted to build a safer car. So John Little mm-hmm. in my area built a, a real 53. That's not a lot of people don't know. That was a real. So now the Corvette guys are after me again. <laughs> so, yeah, so we built a, I bought a. I bought a wrecked one. You're my, you're my hero. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I love but, people going, what would you do? <laughs> so I bought a real one, but it was wrecked. And I have pictures of that, too. Yeah. Um, and uh, we added we added five inches to the front end, but just in front of the door edge, mm-hmm. so it didn't mess up the front. You yeah. know, just in front of the door. Yeah. And uh, so it went from they were um, see the, the C twos were 102 inches wheelbase. The uh, C ones were uh, no, I'm I'm wrong. It's backwards. C ones were 102. The C twos were shorter. Shorter. A lot of people don't know that they were right. 98. Really? And my, my split window was 98, but the 57 was 102. Really? Wow. So, yeah, so we made it 107. Uh-huh. And it did handle better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. it did handle oh, yeah. better. But so so okay. now now we're in my 53. I had an automatic in that. I took the motor out of my 57, put it in my 53. Right away, it went two-tenths quicker. Okay. Same combination. Yep. Basically the same weight. We had to weigh 2650, okay. naturally aspirated. Mm-hmm. Which, see, I just thought... I'm surprised I'm the only idiot that did that because all the other guys were running nitrous, but they had to weigh 32, 3,300 yeah, pounds. Yeah, had to carry a lot of weight. I'd rather have all that weight, you know, sitting in the toolbox or right. in my trailer, exactly. you know, and exactly. carry that down the track. Plus, yeah. they were all the time breaking and everything. I yeah. wasn't moving in that much weight off the starting line. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know? Two words stress on the parts. Yeah. Yeah. But my 53, I still today would put that up against any new car built today. That thing ran 1060 foot with DOT tires. Really? Remember, because I ran the Outlaw. Yeah, See, yeah. I ran Outlaw Street with wow. 53. When you guys came out, and Russ Smeltnick came mm-hmm. out with the rules yep. for Outlaw Street, what it was for, it was for the guy like myself that didn't have a big wallet. Yeah. So what they figured was you could run any motor combination, blower, uh, you couldn't run alcohol. No, you could run alcohol. You could run if you ran a blower. Yeah. But you could run nitrous, you could run a blower, you could run turbos or naturally aspirated. But the t- equalizer was you had to run a DOT tire. Yeah. They figured, well, no matter how much money you have, you got to put it to the track. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's right. what happened. Yep. And back then, the DOT tires weren't worth the what, crap. What, what, what Not like now. Not yeah. You know? Now, now they're every But that car ran one oh sixty foot every run with a DOT tire. Wow. Wow. We John, yeah. John Little is a wizard mm-hmm. at chassis setups. Yeah. So then, and the funny thing was Richard Small from Flowmaster, from Flowmaster. Uh, actually bought us a Lenko transmission. Really? Yeah, a lot really? of people I don't know, know that. that, and I don't mind disclosing it now. Uh-huh. Richard's not with us anymore. Uh-huh. He was a prince. He was but super guy. He wanted to see us continue on, and what happened was 
the NMCA changed the rules where you could run a big tire. They had a tire limit. Okay. And the nitrous and the blower cars couldn't get down a track, so they let them run a bigger tire. Mm -hmm. Well, I couldn't get it on my car. Okay. It would not fit wouldn't on my fit. car. We tried it. Yeah. It wouldn't fit on my car. So I'm running this little tire compared to what they were running. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they're two tenths quicker than me. Yeah. So I knew I could run with them, but I said I can't with the automatic. Uh -huh. See, back then, the, the, um, the bad part of the automatic was the converter. Yeah. Now they got the converters figured out. They got lock-up right. converters. You right. can adjust them. You can take them apart and adjust right. them at the track. Back then was a converter. So it was so much of an advantage to go with a Lenko, a clutch, than an automatic. It was a 200-pound penalty in the rule book. Okay. So I had to, I put the Lenko, the in the four-speed Lenko. Yeah. I put a five-speed, I'm sorry, yeah. I put a five-speed in it, but we had to add 200 pounds. Okay. It went three tenths quicker <laughs> with the 200 pounds, but here's the killer. Yeah. It went six mile an hour faster. Really? So, so, so you got all converter that slippage. slippage. Yep, all that converter slippage. Yeah, see, I had slippage. all that oh, converter yep. slippage. Yep. Six yep. miles an hour? Oh, man. This guy's about paying like a million dollars to go. <laughs> you know? but, but anyway, so um, at the uh, 1998, at uh, Chicago, Route 66, and it's, if any, anyone listening, you can go to YouTube and type my name in, and you can actually see this run. Tina videotaped it from the stands, yeah. and it was the first car to go in the sixes, naturally aspirated, yeah. and which was pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah it was pretty cool. <laughs> but, but anyway, um, they didn't even believe it. They thought the timing was tower was uh -huh. messed up, so I had to, yeah. I made another run. It went a 701 in the heat, but but I got the record at 698 at two, and it ran 200. 200. Yeah. 200 miles but I was Back telling then. you earlier yeah. about the problem with that car was they wouldn't allow you to run a big wing, and and if you can think of a 53 Corvette, a C1 Corvette, yeah. say think of the 53s never had hard tops. They were all convertibles. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. We put a 57 hard top on it. We had to mm -hmm. graft that on. Frank Morawski, a friend of mine, did that. He did a fabulous job. But but anyway, there was no aerodynamics in the back. There was no downforce in the back. Because of the turbulence from the top. Yeah, yeah. because of yeah. the top. A, a, a coupe has that sloped top mm -hmm. where right. the air comes down, follows the roof, and hits the back of the car. Yeah. Not a 53. The top goes like this. Yeah. Yeah. So the air so was the air missing. Tumbled. The mis air was missing a wing. And mm -hmm. the point I'm trying to get at was, this is what I was telling you earlier, at the 1,000-foot mark, and I never told anybody this because they wouldn't have let me race the car. Uh, uh, the only three people that knew it were her, me, and John Little. Uh -huh. Well, at the 1,000-foot mark, no matter where I was, I don't care how good the track was, how bad it was, or where it was, right at the 1,000-foot mark, and I'm, I'm ready for the 1,000-foot, the back end would start dancing, start dancing around because there wasn't any downforce. Because there's, traction cause there's no traction down there. Right, that, right. You already left where right. the traction is, yeah, right? Yeah. And every run, that thing would dance around, and I'd drive out of it. Because what was happening was it was actually lifting the back. It of the was, car. It was actually and it was just like being on ice. You had to counter wow. steer. Can you imagine counter steer in the two hundred miles, miles an hour? Yeah. Not at two. I was a lot, no. a lot younger, a lot braver then. I wouldn't do that now. Luckily, I grew up in New York, so I drove around around ice and ice. sleet so and you, snow. Yeah. But you did too. Not so at yeah. two. You, know, you knew what to expect. Yeah. Right, so right. Uh, with that car, I'll tell you. I'll tell everyone the story I told you about Randy Adler and I. I think we were at Gateway. I'm not sure where it was, and we were in the final. And Randy Adler had to, at blown injected gto gto that thing Big was car. huge yeah it yeah. had the trunk lid was like a picnic table in that thing <laughs> and and it always ran good and when we went to the starting line my car was so quiet i could never hear it i'd have to watch the tack mm -hmm. just to make sure it was still running yeah well anyway we left together and we we're side by side at the thousand foot mark and of course we're both approaching 200 he's probably his cars was a couple mile an hour faster than mine so he might have already been over 200 but anyway, I was in the left lane, and I could see him coming over. And he's coming over fast towards the center line. No. Oh. I wasn't going to go over because I didn't want to get over there in dead man's in, in land, you know, yeah. Yeah, going yeah. that fast. Yeah. I figured he would lift. No, he didn't, he didn't lift. Well, I, I was telling Jeff, I look over, and his wheels are like two feet off the ground. He can't steer. <laughs> oh, the front wheels are off the ground? It's, it's oh. at 200 miles an hour. And it's miles. drifting the rear wheels? And he's, and he's in it. And oh, he's fun. coming over towards <laughs> yeah. me. Mm. And he, he's not lifting. <laughs> and I'm not lifting. <laughs> so Fucking drag down, pirate down, right there, man. <laughs> yeah. We get down the other end, and we, we always did. Everyone was such good sports. And I was telling him, you see what goes on in the pits. 
You see what goes on the starting line. You see what goes, well, you don't, but you don't see what goes on down the other end. That's yeah. just you and the guy you race. Yeah, down sure. There. A lot right. of things happen down there that you yeah. do not believe. I've, I've sponsored <laughs> two nostalgia funny cars. Yeah. yeah. So I know all about the other end. <laughs> the, other yeah. end. the other end is full of lots of fun or lots of not fun, and yeah. Well, <laughs> I usually, I'm hopefully, happy. some real good sportsmanship. And right. Right. Sometimes it's yeah. not. <laughs> well, I, I never towed my car back. We had walkie talkies, mm-hmm. and she would tell me what I ran. And when, we, when Randy and I got down there, he's like, I think I got you. I think I got you. And I said, I don't know. I don't know. We were dead even going across. And she, she messaged me and said, you got him. You got the wind light. <laughs> so, so he wasn't real happy. But I wouldn't have been either. Yeah. So I drove Well, it back. sounds like he was earning it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He earned well, it. We were he talking actually, about that. And I, I said, I think, you know, with the, he was carrying the front tires. He oh, yeah. carried it past the, with the wind light. So the wind light was been triggered on his car with the rear tire. He probably tripped. Oh. So you got you were you were yeah. planted. So you tripped it with the yeah. front tire. And tires. I don't that doubt close. that at all. I don't yeah. doubt that I think at all. That was probably. But what anyway, happened. so he was still I, carrying the wheels at the big end at the thousand oh. foot mark. You yeah. are re- wow. What yeah. the hell we were brave back then. Yeah. That's, That's why the car was yeah. moving over. Yeah, yeah. yeah we got, wanted that wind wow. light to come on. You know, you're willing to kill yourself for a wind light. It's crazy. But but anyway, I always towed mine back, or he towed his back. Tina came down to get me, and and. I always put my parachutes in the car real quick and, mm-hmm. and head back. But, but um, yeah, that was an experience down at the other end. And so then after the 53, I sold that, and I, I wanted to run Pro Street, which is the class up, mm-hmm. okay? So everyone said, oh, you know, it was just her and I. And like I said, we were always like the Beverly Hill Boys compared. I had no spare parts. You know that. Yeah. I never yeah. had a spare engine. Yeah. Never. Yeah. I never heard a motor. Mm-hmm. Never, I never broke a transmission. I can tell you one of the, I'm not going to mention it, but one of the carriers, there's two big carriers, they broke them, but I never did. Really? Yeah. yeah. I got wow. them broken in the yeah. mail. Wow. But but anyway, um, so I wanted to build a pro street car, and I was watching all these indie cars and all, and I got involved and interested in the turbo, uh-huh. the twin turbos. And I thought, you know what, well, we could put a twin turbo car together. So I bought a Rick Jones Firebird. The Firebird. Which belonged to Angelo Alessi. He was world champion with it in IHRA with okay. that car. It was a 99 car, but it was only used for one season. And I bought it rolling, just rolling. And this is the key. So we put a small block in it I got from Kenny Duttweiler. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 388 cubic inches. Uh-huh. Little motor. Little, little motor. Little 76. They look like hair dryers. Yeah. yeah. 76 millimeter. It's yeah. a big difference between one, one millimeter and a turbo. Oh, yeah. 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 Huge power. 76 Which millimeter turbos. Which are tiny. And that thing ran 670s like it was nothing to it. <laughs> quickest, quickest turbo car. And I'll say this in front of everyone. Quickest turbo car in the world at that time. Wow. There was no turbo cars anywhere that could run that wow. fast. And I had to weigh 2,800 pounds. this is still in the 53? Three? No, no, this, this is, is a, fiber. This is oh, the, the fiber. Yeah, the Sorry. twin turbo fiber. Right. So, so um, I had to weigh 2,840 pounds, which was a good bit of weight. Yeah. So the car with me in it, after we finished scaling it, it weighed 2,240. <laughs> we put 600 pounds 600. of lead Woo! in that car. And Yikes. all bars we made up. Uh-huh. And we had lead bars everywhere. And I told everyone, if I ever crash this car, there's going to be lead bars <laughs> flying everywhere. <laughs> it's it's going to be like a train crash. It's going to be freaking taking out people in the stands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So but That car was very successful. It was very, very, very successful. And I'll tell you a little trick that no one knows that I raced against, but they'll know now. Okay, uh, this is how I used to race that car. Because Tina and I, being we didn't have the pocketbooks that everyone had we had to come up with a strategy mm-hmm. and to me that was fun yeah that was like a mind game okay you know what i mean okay, okay so i told her i said here's what we're going to do we're not going to make any more runs than our first qualifying pass you only need to make one you don't yeah. need to make three right but in the morning i'd, I'd make my first qualifying pass mm-hmm. which the air is pretty good the air is good and yeah. i figured if i sat out the x2 i might be bumped back a couple spots we were usually one or two qualifier uh-huh. but even if i got bumped back that's okay because if i didn't make the other two qualifying passes that's two more runs i got in the car because okay. i had no spare parts right right i gotta right. think about that exactly when i'm in the yeah. car and it's i'm just... doing the burnout i'm thinking god don't over rev the car you know be, yeah. i yeah. can't break anything yeah. and if i drove on someone else's nickel i could have been better i think yeah. but i had to be worried about you know mm-hmm. oh god watch watch the burnout and all this stuff but this is what i was going to say so what i would do i was petrified i mean literally petrified that i would red light against a car i knew i could beat uh-huh. and there wasn't anything on the ground that i that, right. was, that i yeah. i couldn't beat yeah and so what i would do it's easy to red light mm-hmm. i sure, mean yeah. really easy oh, yeah. especially in a clutch car yeah so anyway i'd pre-stage right away as soon as the next guy staged i'd go right in i told mm-hmm. you about this yeah so what i would do 
I'd watch the I'd watch the tree and make sure they're staged. As soon as they got fully staged, I'd look at their front end, whether mm-hmm. it was a right lane, right lane or left lane. I'd leave off their front end because I hand. knew they moved first. Okay. Okay. You see what I mean? Yeah. But within 60 feet, I'm buying because yeah. that thing ran 1060 <laughs> right. every run. But that's Which how had to I be ran. Depressing. If that's you're how I ran. I, I never left off the tree, and I could cut a really good light. You'd uh-huh. be surprised how quick yeah. you can cut a light off of someone else. Yeah. You know what's really cool, and, and I'll know you'll 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 back me on this. So, and and it, there is truth to it. But pro street, not the racing class, mm-hmm. the the. Fun fairground, the fairground class stuff, yeah. got a bad rep that the cars were useless and right. fairground cruisers right. and right. and there were there were cars that were very guilty of that even though they looked cool as shit. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really exciting because I've I've known most of this, not the details, but most of your story. So here's a guy that built cars that I would go and see on the fairgrounds, but clearly they run and gun. Yeah. And he clearly knows what he's doing yeah. and knows how to operate the car safely and um, financially swiftly, yeah. which is very, very impressive. So not all pro streeters were uh, Just, posers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, Hot Rod, Hot Rod Magazine, when Lenny, Leonard Emanuelson was the editor, mm-hmm. really kind of attacked you guys, set you guys up, yeah. uh, pro street guys, and I thought that was kind of low. Yeah. They, what yeah. they did was they lined up Fat Jack Robinson and a couple of yeah. other yeah. fast cars I remember against that. you guys. And I didn't know what to think of that. Yeah, that, that well, it was, yeah. it, was, it was intended to make That's you look That's the theory bad. of and, controversy. And I never understood. Yeah, exactly. It was to sell yeah. magazines. Yeah. But, well, one of your but magazines it, it, even said pro street is dead. Yes. Well, it did have a question mark. Oh, okay. it, did. it said, is Street that, yeah. that Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was the centerfold that had that red 69 yeah, Camaro. Yeah, yeah. Randy, Randy Turco's car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, he has mentioned uh, Tina yeah. quite a few times, and we're going to bring her up. She's going to be replacing <laughs> me. Um, and Did you so, have some hero uh, things to do? I have some. I have some. Well, <laughs> no, it's more important. She talks and tells her part of the story too, because <laughs> as far as I remember reading in your pages, um, she's fifty percent of the team. If he's smart, oh, yeah, he'll absolutely. say sixty percent. But yeah, she always um, went with me. It was just usually her and I. John went with us several times. But I'd say about half the times John was there, but most of the time it was her. Well, and luckily I. for you, she's in all the pictures, so <laughs> yeah, not yeah. John. So. But she would. But yeah, you're, you're going to come up, and 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 and, <laughs> and like me in touring and professionally in the band world, I heard you are a uh, ballet. Correct. So you're used to being in front of people. You're fine. Yeah, she dances. And besides, there's only four people here. So, so, <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna take a second, right? And uh, I'll be back on a whole bunch of these from up here. But I, I have to run around and do some other stuff. And I think it's really important that we bring Tina up and and that she uh, t- talks to you guys and tells you her uh, view of what happened back then and what's going on now. So give us two seconds. Cool. Hey, we'd like to thank our sponsor, ARP-Bolts.com. we got a fantastic little backdrop here. They make an outstanding series of bolts, almost anything you would need for engines, chassis, things like that. In fact, we were at lunch today, and a guy asked you about the, the, the bolt on the back of your shirt, and it was, and, it was really, and I said, well, it's really about a head bolt. They neck the, 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 the stem down of the bolt on a short small block Chevy head bolt, so the clamp load is even across three different head bolt lengths on a small block Chevy. And, uh, you know, so that, that's the kind of technology that you get out of sure. ARP. And uh, we, we've all got stories on all that right. stuff. Uh, but, for a uh, translation of what he said, call ARPbolts.com. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the message is that you can't get any better than that. No, you so cannot. There yep. you go. Nope. Excellent. And then just check them out at ARP-bolts.com. We'd like to thank our friends at InTheGarageMedia.com. They have three fantastic magazines. They've got Classic Truck Performance. They have Modern Rotting and my favorite, All Chevy Performance, with Nick, my buddy Nick, oh, you're the so editor. Biased. So Correct. yes, of course. Yes. But uh, they're doing print media, which yes. is, uh, of course, our favorite. So uh, in color magazine. and everything. In color and everything, yes. and and you can get your your car on the cover of one of those books, right. which is right. a fun no, that's deal. A lot. Great yeah. tech. You Great can tech. By you, you know, and not always written by me, but yeah. People. Yeah. Not yeah. always written by me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Just so pick it up and read it. At yes. InTheGarageMedia.com, and uh, they're our friends, and uh, they will thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you were talking about the Firebird. So, well, first of all, we have to introduce what? Yeah. Can you tilt your rod? Oh, I'm sorry. Microphone or you can tilt Move. the microphone. Just do it, yeah. Like that? Here we go. Yeah. You ready? Okay. Okay. Like that? Perfect. 
that good? Yep. All right. So we ready to go? We so we've we left. Steve left us, but we have a much cuter, <laughs> better, better looking person over here on this side. So this is Tina. Yes. Tina, welcome, Hello. welcome to the show. So um, and and you were a big part of the race team. Yeah. All the way through because I I have a story actually. It was what I remember what race it was, but I walk around shooting pictures for the magazine stuff, and you're laying underneath the car, uh. and I walk by. And you're not there. And there's nobody else there. You usually had one or two guys with you, right? Yeah. That would come and help couple, work on the car. A couple times. Yeah. yeah. Mo mostly it was her and I. Yeah. And you're underneath the car. Trans is out. I think you were working on the clutch. Okay. And I come up and I stick my head over there and go, what are you doing? And he goes, working on the car. I said, where is everybody? He said, this is it this, this, this weekend. It's us, right? Yeah. And you were out chasing parts, I think, probably. Because you were gone. Yeah. And it's like, Dude, so I mean, who's helping you? It's like nobody. I know what that was. I remember that. That you, was Memphis. Was that I broke Memphis? All, I broke all the bolts off in the flywheel of the Firebird. Okay. okay. No, it was a 53. It was, it was a 53. It was a 53? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I had all to right. run Adler in the final. And they were calling us up. And I went to start the car, and it just spun over free. And I'm like, oh, my God. And we got underneath. And we had to take the trans out, the clutch out, yeah. completely apart, the tunnel out. And, we had, and Randy had his blower off. So they were waiting for him. Grim. Okay, and so you had the time. So we had then. time. Okay. So he got his back together before we. That's when it was. I remember yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I crawled under the car. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, dude, yeah, they're gonna call the, you in a little bit. The when things all apart. Yeah. And of yeah. course they were they were uh, red Loctited in. Mm -hmm. It wasn't easy to get those bolts oh, out. Yeah. But anyway, that's what that was. <laughs> yeah, that's. I remember that weekend. So a lot of times it was just these guys at the track, and you yeah. were killing them. You were killing well, we them. We did pretty good. Yeah. Like I said, we came up with a strategy. We had to come up with a strategy that fit our, the depth of our pocket, I always mm -hmm. told everybody. And that's what it was. You know, it was like, not don't run all three qualifying. Let's just run one. Mm -hmm. Unless it's a bad run and you, you need to make some changes. Right. We'd go right. out again. Yeah. We, I don't know if we ever ran a second qualifying pass. We'd run the first one, especially with the 57 and the 53, because we're naturally aspirated. Right. The best run is in the morning. In the morning. I'm right, not going to go faster when it gets hotter. Right, right. You so know? I'm going to go slower. Yeah, so right. I figured, well, I I would go up and watch a track because I knew all the competitors, uh, Bruce Kimmon and Randy and all, everybody, yeah. you know, Danny Scott, yeah. Max Carter, Mike Moran. I mean, I could go yeah. all those oh, big yeah. names, right? Yeah. But I knew their cars. Mm -hmm. So I'd go up and watch them, let them go down. I'd watch them, and I knew how the track was. Mm -hmm. So then we'd set the car up for what I just witnessed. You uh -huh. know? And then we'd try to make the best run we could, and then we'd sit out. And usually we're eating a hot dog while they're out there trying oh, to and, better our qualifying. And, yeah, beating their cars up. And we're eating a hot dog, and they're yep. out there you know, beating their cars up, yep. crashing yep. and whatever. Yep. But that was the advantage of going naturally aspirated. Yeah, uh, I really yeah. think we made the best. Then, then the Firebird probably was the most successful car. It, it wasn't was, it? as far as the unbeatable. The Firebird was just about unbeatable, mm -hmm. uh, and there weren't any other turbo cars out there going that fast that were consistent. Uh -huh. um, we and could then, run. Then Rieger had that was a turbo car too. Wasn't yeah, it? so uh, yeah, Rieger uh, and I came out uh, with the. I had the, the, the '98 Rick Jones Firebird, um, and that was. Um, Let's see, that was, that was a 90, well, that would have been 98. We bought it. It was a, it was a, I'm sorry, that was 99. Okay, that was a 99. We came out with a Firebird. Okay. And, and Rieger had a Firebird that was naturally aspirated. He had a Sonny's motor in it. Yeah, uh, yeah. 813 uh -huh. IHRE Pro Stock, five-inch sports spacing Sonny's motor. And um, so we came out with a turbo car, and, he, and it, was a, it wasn't a very good engine. It was nothing against Dutwell, but mm -hmm. it was a used engine. Yeah. It was a small cubic inch, small turbo. It's very uh, antiquated engine. And uh, right away, it went two-tenths quicker than everybody. <laughs> I mean, the first pass we made, which was really cool, in a, in a turbo car, the best place to go to test it is eighth mile. Okay. You yeah. know what I mean? Yep. Just go eighth mile for the testing and and Huntsville was our only eighth mile uh, track on the whole series so it happened to be Huntsville we never made a pad we put the motor in the car put 600 pounds of lead in it never tested it we didn't know what rear end gear is what first gear ratio we really didn't know you don't know till you test something right you know? right especially when you're going that heavy I was never that heavy in my naturally aspirated cars and we went to Huntsville and the first this is really funny the first pass down the track we I drove it through the scales I drove it to tech line, and I drove it to the starting line. Mm -hmm. And the first pass, it set every record in every increment. All the increments, the 60 <laughs> foot record, the 330 30, foot, 30, eighth mile, eighth mile. And, wow. and mile an hour. It yeah. set all those records, the first wow. pass down first the track. Pass. And don't you think Tony Christian and Pat, they were paying Mike, attention. Oh, and yeah. Danny, all those guys, yep. they were oh, yeah. pretty upset about they that. They were like, damn. <laughs> yeah. So then what I was telling you earlier was what I, what I used to do when I got used to the car. I didn't want to show my hand because 
they, NMCA would put weight on you, you know, especially if you're running against other, you know, aspirated cars. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I didn't want to show my hand, but I didn't want to detune the car either because I may need that on the track. I may be two thirds down the track and I need all the power I got. Yeah. So what I would do was I would short shift the car. Okay. And you couldn't short shift fourth gear though, because if you short shifted fourth gear, you drive through the clutch. Okay. Just like doing a burnout, you got to be uh -huh. careful doing a burnout. Because you didn't have enough RPM to didn't load the clutch. Didn't have enough RPM. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I had to wind out, you know, third gear pretty far. Mm -hmm. But anyway, no one ever picked up on that. But you know who did? Billy Glidden <laughs> came up to me, and I think it was Gateway International. Um, in St. Louis, uh -huh. and he goes, I know what you're doing. <laughs> I'm like, and I didn't know if he was talking about short shifting or if he was talking about how I left the starting line okay. off the competitor's car. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't know. So I said, what am I doing? <laughs> he goes, I know where you, I see where you're shifting it. Cause uh, he could, he was smart enough. Sure. Oh, the Glenns yeah. were really smart. Oh yeah. Well, the whole he family. spent his whole life, yeah. you know, pro stock racing with his and dad. He's yeah. probably the only person at the track that would have picked that up yeah. by yeah. listening. But he was watching us, uh -huh. and he was listening to the car, and he knew I was short-shifting it, uh -huh. but it worked out good. Yeah. I, mean, it, yeah. I never really had to show our yeah. hand or anything, so that was pretty cool. Then there's a story about Rieger, too, right? Yeah. What, what he ended up doing at the end of the season? Yeah, so let's see how I can how I can explain this without giving up too much. Um, so after Gateway, where I set the record in, uh -huh. the, in the Firebird, I went 677 to 206. And the record was, it was about a tenth and a half faster than the record. Okay. I remember we were, St. Louis, you go over a little, under a little underpass mm -hmm. or overpass. Yeah. And there were speakers up there. And mm -hmm. I was sitting there with the car shut off and the cars were going down and somebody was getting ready to get it in the water box in front of me. And I could hear the announcers. It was, um, um, he passed away. Aaron, um. Uh, I can't think of his last name. What was Aaron's last name? Really nice guy. Anyway, he was one of the announcers. I could hear him talking, uh -huh. and he's apologizing because it was hot and humid. Okay. He was apologizing to the crowd for the slow times. Slow times. No one was running in sixes. Right, I think right. Pat Pat might have been the fastest. He ran on 707 or something. Okay. And and uh, I remember hearing him, Aaron Green. Aaron okay. Green, bless okay. his heart. Yeah. God rest his soul. Yeah. Anyway... I could hear him talking, and he's apologizing to the fans. And I'm thinking, oh, God, I'm going to run a terrible time here. Everybody else will run slow. And we, we went 677 in that thing. Yeah. Then he and, probably went up apoplectic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, going yeah. Three tenths quicker than everybody else. Yeah. yeah. But uh, so anyway, we won that race. We set the record, both ends of the record, which you got a ton of points for. Got points for. Right. And we won the race. So on the way home, we're coming through Wheeling, West Virginia, which is five hours before we're home. And Tina's got a little notepad out. And yeah. she's, she's writing down all the points that everybody has. Mm -hmm. And it was um, me, and it was Bob Rieger, and then Tony Christian, Tony Christian. the top three. Uh -huh. Well, she said, there was two races left. It was Memphis and Atlanta in okay. that order, okay? okay? She said, you know what? They can't beat us. She goes, we've got <laughs> enough points. As long as we, ha as long as we attend... Next, oh, you got to show up and make yeah, a pass you and gotta, qualify. Well, you didn't have to make a pass. You got 100 points to show up. Oh, to show up. Yeah, okay. and register. Okay. If you showed up and register, you got 100 points. And if we got those 200 points, we didn't even have to take the car out of the trailer. Wow. We were world champion. Wow. And I really wanted to win world champion because everybody said you can't run with those guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know? yeah, right, yep. Nothing more, nothing more motivating than someone yeah. says you can't do that, right? Plus, plus the fact no one had ever won – in a lower class, won world championship and moved up and then won it there too, okay. back to back. No one okay. had ever done that. Okay. But so we're driving through Wheeling, West Virginia, and I'm on top of the world, especially after she said that's going to be, we're going to be world <laughs> champion. Plus, it was a fifty thousand dollar payout. That yeah. was a lot of money. It's wow. a lot of money now. A lot of money now. In '99, that was a lot. We mm. really could use it because there were times when it was either pay the house payment or go to the racetrack. Guess what we did? <laughs> <laughs> but usually we'd come home with enough to pay the house to, payment. To make the house payment. But, right, but anyway, right. um, oh, man. so we were coming through Wheeling, West Virginia. She had already figured this out. My fellow's tel telephone rings, and it's Bob Rieger. He's called me from, from here, California. Mm -hmm. And he figured it out, too. Uh -huh. He'd he, done the math. Yeah, he yep. said, what's it going to cost me for you to stay home the next? That's exactly what he said. What's it going to yeah. cost me for you to stay home the next two races? Because he wanted to be world champion, and I understand that. Yeah. I wouldn't have wanted to buy it, though. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have wanted to, to earn it. Right. You know right. what I mean? Right. And nothing against he Bob. Did, he didn't care as long as he got Bob, the chance. I tell you, Bob was a great guy. Yeah, he, he was. was. I told he, you earlier. He yeah. was a really good guy, really good sport. And Duttweiler did motors for him, too. Yeah. yeah. Duttweiler yeah. did his engines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so anyway, uh, my dad always told me that sometimes in life you got to look back at your 
opportunities. Mm -hmm. What opportunities you took advantage, which ones you didn't take advantage. Yeah. And I thought, this is an opportunity. It is. Because yeah. see, here's what, see, I always think ahead. And I'm thinking, I know they're going to put weight on me next year. <laughs> You're running too good, right? Yeah. They're gonna, I know they're, but they're going to wait until the end of the season to do it. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. knew I knew the next year they were going to put weight on me. And, and uh, I thought, that's going to make it hard for us, especially with no spare parts and all yeah. that. And there were other things. We could have really used the money. We, we were kind of in the hole from you know buying everything and, and, and people don't borrowed. understand how expensive racing oh, yeah. is once you've built the car people think well then that everything else is easy no because no. all your all your travel expenses mm -hmm. fuel hotel rooms all that yeah. stuff and you guys were traveling from Maryland Maryland yeah, all the way down to Atlanta and, yeah. and, and Memphis Florida, and business, like Florida. Yeah. it's like it's, we, it's as expensive it's expensive then it's expensive it now was really expensive and, it's, and you know it's like racers I've, they get the car they get the stuff and they don't have any money to go race because you don't have enough money to, yeah. to do it yeah that's so so all the way home I thought what well, my dad said you know this is an opportunity I need to take advantage of this I don't need to be looking at this later on and saying mm -hmm. oh I wish I'd have done that yeah and and uh, plus you know I could always build another car right which right. I did right but, but anyway um, <laughs> So when we got home, he told me, we didn't talk price or anything like mm -hmm. that. He said, when you get home, no matter what time it is, call me. Uh -huh. And I did. Yeah. And I called him and I said, okay, Bob, this is what I want. And uh, we agreed upon a price. And the funny thing was, he was so sure that he would buy the car because he knew there was a price that I would sell it. Mm -hmm. He knew. Because sure. he knew we had yeah. we had no spare parts. He used to come in our trailer and look down the side of the trailer and go, where's mm -hmm. all your spare engines? Yeah. Same yeah, and I like, always teased him. I'd say, I always say, I only need one in the car to beat your your ass, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, so he knew there was a price. He already had a guy on his way to pick up the car. Wow. Before we talked. Wow. Yeah. Wow. He already had a He, he was already, already had convinced, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, but anyway, it worked out fine. It was time for us to get out of it. I think we really stayed with it a little longer than we should have. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's hard. It's like a drug addict. Oh, yeah. You, it's like putting drugs because when you do good at something, mm -hmm. you want to keep doing it. It's hard to walk it. away. Yep, it is. It is. It was. It was. Was, hard. That, was that a good move though? That was a good move. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, hard. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so, you guys. So between working full yeah, time, she worked full and time. racing, and then mm -hmm. you were you're a nurse, right? I was a medical assistant. Medical yeah. assistant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you guys are working full time, racing all, all virtually full time, at least yeah. in the summertime. And yeah. that's that that's that's a that's you know when, when, when did you sleep? Well, that's a problem. <laughs> I worked on the car all week getting it ready. You know how much work that is, especially yeah. in a six-second car. Yeah, I worked all week getting the car ready at, at nights. I worked all day on roofs, yeah. on barn roofs. Yeah, and and then she worked every day. So mm -hmm. when we like we'd go to the, say we go to Memphis, uh, we had to be there Friday at a certain time to qualify and register mm -hmm. and all that. Well, it was 22 hours from our house to Memphis. And that's nonstop. We didn't stop for hotels or anything. All we did stop for gas. Okay. And while she's pumping gas in the motorhome, I'd be using the bathroom or whatever. And then we hit the road, and she'd make me sandwiches. I always ate bologna and cheese sandwiches. That's all I ate. <laughs> yeah, didn't you? Uh -huh. Yeah. And then, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was actually, I could never do it now. It was yeah. brutal. Yeah, it if was. No oh, one yeah, knows. Yeah. They see you at the track, and they see all the accolades and everything, but they have no idea what, all the effort it's not that goes just into me. It. Yeah, I mean all, all the racers. all the racers. Absolutely, every single one. They have no every, idea every what you go through to to make a pass on the track yeah. in the car. Yeah, and and uh, to be world champion and to make, win all those races, it, it took a lot out of us. Yeah, it really did. Oh, and yeah. I'm kind of glad that we did that. That our, that auction, that um, opportunity came mm -hmm. up right, mm -hmm. and and it was the right time, mm -hmm. and and we got out of it. So. Yeah. Um, we threw the towel in, and, and we ended up with enough. We didn't make any money, but we were able to wipe the slate clean. Right, right. Which was a, which lot, is, a lot of racers. That's huge. Oh, yeah, yeah. It ruins a lot they, of racers. Exactly. Oh, you yeah. get out of it, and you still have thousands and thousands of dollars you owe yeah. for all the stuff that you did. Yeah. But yeah. what I was saying about the, it took 22 hours to get to Memphis. We would leave 22 hours before we had to be there because she was working. I was working, wow. getting the car ready. And if I hit a two-hour traffic jam, I had to make that up. Yeah. Yeah. So it was white knuckle the oh, whole boy. way, wow. and and usually coming back the same way because she worked in the doctor's office. Had to go back office. to work. She had, she had mm -hmm. to be at work. She couldn't miss work. Yeah. So many times I'd drop her off at the front of the house. She'd go in and change her clothes, and by the time I'm around the back of the house getting ready to unload, she's already on the way to work. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. She just change wow. her clothes and go. Wow. You know, after wow. 20 hours riding. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So yeah, so there's that, a, and that's a that's, a, that's takes a lot, lot out oh, of yeah. both of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. 
There's a lot of good yeah. things, but well, there's, there's a lot of support bad there, you yes. know, because uh, there's a lot of guys that don't get that. Right. So, right. you know, yeah. I, think, I think that's really that's Yeah, really I special. had the only crew really chief special. that you'd want to kiss. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't get out of cars after you oh, stopped no, racing. No, of course so not. No. Went, went back no. to street cars. Yeah, right? I went back to street cars. So then we were talking about this earlier. I, I built a, um, a, a split window that was a total wreck. It was hitting the back, it was hitting the front. We hadn't even had to put a firewall in it. Mm -hmm. But I made, it was one of the, remember, uh, David uh, Freiberg, he even mentioned in one of the Carcraft magazine, he thought it was the best mixed between Pro Street and Resto Mod. Uh -huh. And that uh -huh. was at the Nationals there mm -hmm. uh, in Ohio. Yeah. So in 2001, I finished that. That had a new Z06 LS motor okay. in it with the dry sump and all uh -huh. five speed, and I did everything but the paint on that mm -hmm. car. Um, and we had a ball with that. As a matter of fact, of all the cars I've had, that was her favorite. That was your favorite? Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. was the red car. It, it was, was blue. 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 It was that's blue. Right. Yeah. yeah, it was. That's in British Columbia now. Uh -huh. The guy won't sell it. To yeah, me. <laughs> I'd yeah. have to buy it back. But that was a long time ago, <laughs> though. You know, two thousand. But you've had a bunch of cars since then. Oh, guys God. selling Corvettes. Yeah, yeah. I I buy them, no matter how nice. I like C twos. And no matter how nice they are, I can always take it to another level. Yeah. You know, there's always another yeah. level. Right, 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 right. And it may not be better quality. It may just suit you better. Right, right. You know? So let me interrupt for a second. What made that car so special for you? It's just the blue is gorgeous. White interior. Yeah. It had it white yeah. leather interior. White leather. Uh -huh. It was pretty. Yeah. It was just a pretty car. And it was just a fun car to ride in. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. She drove yeah. it more than I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She, she likes Drive it to work? No. It's, no. <laughs> <laughs> So then, yeah. yeah, after that, I had, uh, what was after that? Let's see. Oh, oh I know. After that was um, the motor that uh, Mike Moran built us, a uh, small block with the big block heads on it. Really? Richard, Richard Maskins came out with, he came out with these heads for the pro stock trucks. Remember they had the pro stock truck? Right, trucks? right. Well, they were small blocks. Okay. Well, yeah. they kept burning, yeah, they they kept burning like their motors up because the heads couldn't flow enough for the two dominators. Okay. So Richard Maskins came out with uh, big block heads, basically, to fit a small block. Okay. All for right. that class. Okay. That was legal in uh -huh. that class because yep. they were still running the same Kubi Gitsis, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They didn't yeah. want to confuse the Because essentially it was pro stock with trucks is what yeah, it really was. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. So you yeah. could do anything and you wanted And they wanted a small heads. block versus the 500 Kubi Gitsis right. big blocks in right. the pro stock right. cars. Because anyway, Lingenfelder was big at that too. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 well, so well, Mike built this motor for me and I wanted to put it in a, a street car to do a little racing and plus drive it on the street. And um, so while he was building the motor, we had a... Um, a car built a low down hot rods in cambridge canada uh -huh. um they tom vandergrell he's a good friend of mine he built us a beautiful car do you remember the red there's pictures of it in the book yeah there. yeah um but that was absolutely a street car it mm -hmm. was a stock body we lent it a foot uh frank morowski who did the 53 he also did the fiberglass work on that it's mm -hmm. a it's a lot to lengthen a car a foot oh, yes. and not That's have fun. it look out of proportion right. exactly right yeah. well yeah. we cut the roof in half behind the door we put four inches in there but see when you cut the roof in half and you move the back of the car back it changes the roof line right so right. we had to redo yeah. the roof line oh, on man. that car <laughs> yeah and we added six inches in the front and two inches at the axle center line so that was a foot okay but see it looked in proportion okay because it was done in three different it, places. In three different places, car. as opposed to just one spot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so just, yeah. Mike built us a really cool, it was a 2,400 horsepower. It was a 400 cubic inch small block. Wow. And uh, could drive it anywhere. I mean, that car, we drove it on the Woodward Cruise, both sides of the Woodward Cruise. Yeah. Uh, uh, we just, it was a great car. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, it, it, when, I, when I had that car in 2009, I had a massive heart attack. I was on top of a this, barn roof. This is... I think you've told me this story. Yeah. You had a heart attack on the roof. Yeah, I was 70 feet in the air on the roof. Told you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And and then mm -hmm. and then you you crawled down. <laughs> I got down. I don't got know. I got down. down. Yeah. And then he beat you to the hospital, right? Mm. No, yeah. is that the way? I th that's the way I remember the story. They well, flew me they, to the hospital. Oh, they flew you to the she hospital. She drove her super okay. and beat the helicopter. Yeah, yeah. I beat the helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I had what they call an aortic dissection. It's not a good thing for your heart. Okay. And and uh, the reason why I know I was 70 feet in the air was we had a 40-foot ladder that just reached the spouting, and I was 30 feet up on the roof oh. on the ladder. But anyway, I was able to climb down, <laughs> and they, they flew me down Baltimore, and I was three days on a heart pump because my, my heart needed a cyst. Okay. And I was, that was worse than the heart attack, the heart pump was. And how long ago was this? This was 2009. 
15 so years about ago. 15 years ago? Okay. Yeah. So how you doing now? You're I'm doing, doing great. Good? Excellent. I, yeah, Excellent. I'm doing good. Yeah, you are. You look fantastic, man. You I know? got a younger wife. I, yeah, there you go. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Well, let's get her involved. So, yeah. so and the Camaro, <laughs> yes. the Camaro, which I drove to my prom, Uh huh. well, her and I drove to my 50th class reunion just four years ago. Okay. Five years ago now, 2019. So... When I got there, all the girls that I graduated with, they're all looking at her. And, and, and one, somebody said, is that your date from the prom? And she goes, heck no, I was only five years old when you graduated. <laughs> <laughs> but they were really, they, they were really good nice. to her. Oh, yeah. yeah, they yeah. were really nice to her. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, so you yeah. drive the Camaro now? Uh, I've uh, driven it once, I think. Driven, yeah. 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 yeah, it's got a five-speed in it now. I drove the Black Widow more. Yeah, she drove okay. the Black Widow, which is another car I passed over, actually. It was built It was built by uh, Legacy Innovations in York, and it was a split, another split window. Another split window, but it, yeah. But these other split windows I'm talking about, they were junk cars. Mm-hmm. They were wrecked cars. The first one was the really nice one. Right. But but anyway, uh, this was a wrecked car we put together, and we called it the Black Widow. It was at the SEMA show and, and the PRI show, uh-huh. and, but it was uh, black with some red striping on it, and that's why we called it Black Widow. Okay. Okay. That had a, a ZR1 engine. In okay. It. Yeah. That had yeah. a ZR1 engine. Yeah. That thing was fast. It was yeah. 600, 620 horsepower from Ooh. the factory. Okay. Yeah, from the yeah. factory. Of course, LS. Drive that car? And oh, she drove I that. I drove that more than he did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she did. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was a six-speed in that. She likes stick shift. She's got a Subaru, and it's always she always has stick shift. Uh-huh. But, yeah, so. Yeah. But she has a ballet recital every two years. She's got okay. one coming up mm-hmm. this year. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's my little support. I yeah. support him. He supports me. <laughs> she supported me all those years, That's so the way it's it time works. to pay yeah. back. That's the way it's supposed to work. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 So I guess we're just about caught up. Let's see. What do we, what do we have now? Well, right now, I, I um, had a car. I can give credit to Troy Trepanier. He built okay. this um, a split window for a guy. Uh, it had a Keith Black Hemi in it. Okay. I don't know if you ever saw that no. on the Internet. No. It, wasn't, it was never photographed. Um, it just photographed recently. Uh, but anyway, it had a Keith Black Hemi in it, and the neat thing was, Troy built it for this gentleman that didn't want to drive it. It, it didn't start. It had no clutch in it. It had no brakes, no wiring. He wanted to have it sitting in his restaurant. Oh, okay. It was a really? what they called a static display uh, car. Okay, okay. And I always liked it when I mm-hmm. saw it, because Troy and I are still friends. I saw pictures of it when he was building it uh-huh. on the Internet and so forth, and I kept bugging him. And finally, the guy that bought it... Um, he, he um, sold his restaurant, and I was able to get it from his family, uh-huh. and I finished it. Really? Oh, and that car, again, you could drive it anyway. I sent a motor to um, Mike Janis okay. that does Pro Mod Motors okay. up in New York. Yeah. Uh, he built the motor for me, rebuilt the motor, because it was a top alcohol dragster engine. Mm-hmm. It made like 3,000 horsepower, yeah. and Mike Mike detuned it for me, yeah. put EFI on it. Okay. And I, so I just, that that's probably my last car that I've yeah. done. And yeah. I'm always tinkering with stuff. Yeah. I'll yeah. never finish, yeah. you know. Yeah. So he's out in the shop a lot? Sure. Oh, yeah. 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 That's okay. <laughs> she doesn't mind. I don't yeah. mind. So street car I'm, stuff's more fun than drag racing? or I think so. It's yeah. less stressful. Yeah. 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 It was really stressful. She would get stressed out, and I would, she kept me in, in check most mm-hmm. of the time, you know. Yeah. But it was really stressful. I'd pack your parachutes. Yeah. yeah so, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, that's a funny so, story. So, Tina <laughs> always packed my parachutes. So, she'd be packing the parachutes as I'm just in the valve. So, in the, in the six second cars, every run, we swapped rear tires. Okay. Every run. Right. Right. So that's a lot of work mm-hmm. for one guy. Yeah. I'm by myself. She's yeah. doing the computer work in the uh-huh. car. In the, in the naturally, naturally aspirated cars, there was a, a split dominator. So I had four two burrows. Mm-hmm. She changed the jets every run. Really? Because the, EG, mm-hmm. the really? EGTs would change every run. Okay. And you wanted to run as lean as you could without hurting it. Right. That's how right. you go fast. Yep. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And and uh, so we had to keep an eye on that. So that was her job. So she changed the jets and all the carburetors. You were changing that? I, didn't, mm-hmm. I, I just never knew that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, she would pack the pair. I never packed a pair. Well, I did. I packed a parachutes at um, Summit with Mike Moran's motor, and okay. it didn't open. <laughs> I did it. it didn't open. And I went off the end of the track, too. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But, but anyway, um, so she would pack the parachutes, and she would say, do you love me, honey? Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the cars, two chutes, it wouldn't stop with one chute. Oh, no. Yeah. No, it yeah. had to have yeah. both chutes. Wow. It would not stop with one chute. But, yeah, if it wouldn't be for her, I would have never been able to do what we did i mean yeah. people always say that but it's true uh, it mean, is absolutely need, true you need that support yep and, yep. and her help was just invaluable mm-hmm. you know? yeah so we were like a two-man show cool yep. yeah we were, well, and that's what always impressed me because i'd come to the track the races and it'd just be you guys 
Yeah. You know, the, the other Rieger had this whole, oh, God. Uh, you know, whole crew and <laughs> yeah. all this stuff, and, and it was just you guys. You yeah, know? Rieger like, had all those turbo motors and a uh, well, yeah, they were all had, the he, same. Yeah, but they were yeah, lined up in the in yeah, the, in they the, were lined up. Yep. And if he had a missing one, they didn't work on it. They just yeah, pulled just, it out, put yeah, another yeah, one put, in, put it on a silver belt. We had to, we had to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, it worked out good. I don't know yeah. if we would have kept if we would have been on top very much longer because you, you can only stay on top for so long if you don't have it's the so money. It, the only thing harder than getting there is staying there. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, that's really hard, really hard. Yeah. And my yeah. dad always said, you know, you're never number one for very long. There's always someone that comes along that can run faster, jump yep. higher, spell better, there's, whatever it is. There's, there's, there's always a, always, there's always a faster gunfighter, yeah. right? And there yeah. was that yeah. person was waiting around the corner for yeah. us. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So anything in the future? Anything you guys are planning on doing? Something fun? Um, I've got a little super stock car now that I bought. Really? Yeah, because when I had my heart attack, NHRA took my license, which they should have. Mm -hmm. uh, at that level, you need like an FAA type license. Okay. The same type of thing. Okay. Uh, if you have a bad heart, you can't do what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And and uh, they took my license from me, so you can run NHRA if you if you have a 10 second or slower car without a license. Okay. Okay. So I bought a super stock Corvette. Okay. Of course. Of course. And I'm having a ball with that. I had a little, a little small block built for it, and mm -hmm. I drive on the street, mm -hmm. which I have to drive my cars. I mean, yeah. I drove my '57. Yeah. Going back to my '57 that was running 770s, 750s, 760s, and 70s, I would drive it from my house to Charlie Garrett's shop. Yeah. Every, before every race, uh -huh. he would leak the motor down in the driveway. Uh -huh. I'd drive it back, load it, and go through the track. And it's <laughs> it's 35 minutes each way. And I'm driving a seven-second car. Seven-second car. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, that's what made it fun. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Well, and we had, we had a lot of fans, a lot of really good fans that followed us to all the tracks. Uh -huh. and, and that really helped out. Speaking of that, I found, because I, I moved three years ago back to Iowa, so mm -hmm. I'm still unpacking. That's because it's, it's an ongoing deal. I found one of your T-shirts. Did you with, really? With, I think the 57 on the, on, on the T-shirt. Oh, wow. I, I was going to take a picture of it and send it to you. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of them out there. <laughs> we, we had a vendor store in our trailer which we parked a car right beside, mm -hmm. which was nice, because she could hand me tools and stuff through the vendor's yeah. door. But we also used it to sell, sell T-shirts. Mm -hmm. And that really helped us finance. Oh, yeah. You'd be surprised. Oh, yeah. I mean, we yeah. could go through a 1,000 T-shirts a weekend. Mm -hmm. I mean, we sold hats. Yeah, yeah hats. We wow. had hats and posters. 1,000 T-shirts? Easily. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. She would be selling them left and right, and we'd yeah. have to close the doors because I had to go had to go to race. Go make, make, make you know, a pass. And everybody yeah. would be waiting for yeah. us to come back. <laughs> when we came back, there'd be a line waiting. Like, I gotta work on the car. <laughs> so you get in there and sell the shirts. <laughs> but that was a big help. The, pe yeah. the fans were really good to us. I think people could rec could, could relate with us mm -hmm. because yeah. it's a husband. It, well, we weren't married then, yeah. actually. Really? We married, yeah, we weren't married. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But but um, I think they could relate with us, and they gave them hope because people can see. You know, we're not very uh, wealthy people, right? But right. they could see they're doing it. Yeah, exactly. So, so maybe I could do what's it. What's my excuse? Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I know. I think that's why people kind of mm -hmm. clung to us. Like yeah. They did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. <laughs> So we could probably do this for another hour. Yeah, we probably could. There's a lot of things I skipped over. There's there's some stories we wish we could tell. Yeah, right? I know. Yeah, yeah, he knows them all. <laughs> so uh, thank you again for coming up. Oh, you know, my pleasure, Tina. Thank you know, you. oh man, you know, I know this is a challenge, but it's okay. <laughs> and uh, you know, we want to thank the. Uh, we want to thank the Grand National Roaster Show for helping us out with this whole place here, and of course. ARP-Bolts.com, our sponsor. Couldn't do it without those guys. And uh, if you like what we're telling, the stories we're telling you, keep watching and we'll keep telling you stories.